tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hello, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled is Philippe Cezanne and Fulvia Levy Bianchi. Art historian, consultant, expert, Philippe Cezanne was born in the south of France. He's been in the art business in Paris for 40 years as a gallery advisor and director, as an export advisor and art consultant, and finally, close to uh, not too long ago, he had his own gallery in the Louvre des Antiquaires in Paris, right exactly. across from the yeah. Louvre. <laughs> <laughs> Philippe, let's talk about the first gallery where you were the director. Well, the Gallery du Renouel, you may know, it's very, very famous, I think, all around the world for all the art lovers, because uh, this family has been related with all those artists, the Barbizon School first, and mm -hmm. the Impressionist, well, they're mostly known as uh, the art dealer of Impressionist. And anywhere you go in a museum, if you look at the provenance of a, big, of a painting of Renoir or Monet, you always see Durand Royal Gallery. <laughs> so it started there and it was sold mm -hmm. and, and uh, were they? So for me it was, I mean, a fantastic place to learn art and business. Was it course. the first place you went? Yes, I was 23 years old. And you were, did you go to art school? No, 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 never. But you know, art was part of my family since I was very, very young. And. Did it really play a part in your liking art? Were there other people in the family who went into the art business? Uh, in the art business directly, no. My father has been a painter. Oh, your father was a painter? For almost 15 years. And his name? Uh, his name is Jean-Pierre Cézanne, but he, he used to sign Jean-Pierre Rivière, oh. who was the name of his mother. Oh. And your but grandfather? He, but he stopped because, oh. uh, you know, it was very, very hard for him to have this man uh, uh, on his shoulder because you know, everybody knew that he was the grandson of Cézanne. So uh, the, the, uh, when he had a critic on a newspaper, they used to say, behind uh, Jean-Pierre Rivière, you could find uh, the grandson of Cézanne. Oh, so your father was the grandson. Yes, and I'm the great-grandson. Oh, and you're the great-grandson. Yes. Um, were any of those paintings of your great-grandfather passed down through the family? Yes, my grandfather had, after the death of Cézanne, uh, I think about 12 paintings. It wasn't very much. Did you refer, to your, did. Did you refer to your great-grandfather as Cézanne all the time in the family, or did you call him Great grandfather. No, yes. Well, no, <laughs> it was nothing. No, we. Till 50, I think the last painting that had been sold by my family, uh, it was in 54, so I was 14 years old. Oh. So I saw two or three paintings that was hanging in uh, my grandparents' house. You know, one of the things when we were talking about, you gave a lecture at Gallery Michael on the mm -hmm. Barbizon School, and we're going to talk about that, and I'm sure yes. you can talk about the Impressionists just as well. But somebody in the gallery said he's Philippe Cezanne, the great-grandson, carries the family name with such great honor and pride and knowledge mm -hmm. of art. So it's congratulations <laughs> to someone like you. <laughs> Thank you, that's too much. No. <laughs> so, when, so you really learned the Impressionists from Durand. Was also, was Durand part of the furniture design? At the beginning, the family start. They it were did. a bookseller and uh, they have some furniture for art. That's uh, like that, that they met the first uh, Rousseau, Corot and others. So they decided to buy some painting. It was, I think, in 1825. Oh. <coughs> in fact, they were, it, it was a sort of deal. They 
give all the, the canvas, brush and paint for, to the artist. And instead of money, they, they, they took some paintings. So they were that was the beginning. Patrons. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I think that's so. what patrons, how patrons mm -hmm. help artists, mm -hmm. right? Besides doing other things. Th so then you uh, went into the, the export business. Who, me? You. Yes, well, I, I work a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you working yeah. in export? Mm-hmm. And curating shows? Yes. While well, I was involved in uh, a few uh, exhibits, Cezanne, almost, uh, in Madrid in 84, in uh, Japan in 74. And uh, we are preparing a very big exhibit with uh, Washington. Ah, right. For the, uh, in 06, for the century of his dress. You talking about Cezanne and the century? Now you're you're living in. Um, I am in, living in a small village in the French Alps near Geneva. But you're part but of I the. Am, tell me the Cezanne yes. centenary. Is that yes? It? I go very often in Aix en Provence because we are preparing that centenary. And you were a curator in Aix. Mm of the museum? Is there a Cezanne museum there? Yes, there is a museum called the Museum Musée Granet. Oh. Granet was a painter uh, of the generation before, uh, before Cezanne. And did you do, cur did you actually work there as a curator? Not as a curator, no, no. I am outside, but uh, I am um, president of, uh, a, since a year, president of a um. sort of foundation, Cezanne Foundation. Um, what is all the members, if you may, are all the uh, uh, art historian, curators, uh, and the professor of university who knows the best, Cezanne. So we are all working together. At this w one mm -hmm. foundation. Mm -hmm. It's always input, you, you share ideas and... Exactly. Do you... Um, I don't know where I read this, but are there products at this museum? Are there things that represent the artists that people can buy or not? Just a few. Just, Just a few. How do you... Uh, no, they, they, uh, usually they have uh, postcards and uh, oh, just things like that. No. Things like that. When you had your own gallery then... I had my own gallery, What yes, did you sell for there? 15 years. <laughs> well, not impressionist because it was... Uh, more difficult to find, but post impressionists, the, the generation after. And who were those? And names? bronzes. Oh, and bronzes. Or Barbies in school, of course. And that, like that, I met uh, Michael Schwartz the, from the gallery. Michael, because he used to come and see me, and he loves the Barbizon school. I think he loved what I love too. This and point. you love the Barbizon. <laughs> I, the Barbizon school actually was the lead into the Impressionists, from exactly. what I understand. It's so tell really, us about the Barbizon. Really, I think the Barbizon school it was it's a very very important school because it's really the beginning of modern art. I see. And what year was it? Uh, well, let's say about uh, 1824. And up because to. Because in fact. Um, in 24, there had been a, an exhibit of Constable and Turner in France, in Paris, who are, as you know, two important uh, English, English painters. Right. And so the young generation saw uh, in this exhibit small paintings by, by Constable that he used to do directly on nature. Um. And they fell in love and said, that's what we want to do. So we call that so plein that, air. Exactly. Outside, painting so and they decide to go um, on, uh, on nature at the time. And then, uh, from what I understand, because you gave a lecture the other night, and I mm -hmm. thought it was very interesting, there were hundreds of people painting on the hillsides in, bar in the Barbizon area. Absolutely. And that was a huge park, was it? And green. Well, the, the, the Fontainebleau Forest is oh, about, right. um, let's say, 25 miles from top I to bottom and 22. And how far was uh, and Paris was to Barbizon? About uh, 30 miles. Oh, so it's, it was very close. Did they, so live, rather, it, did they yes. live in the country or did they live in Paris? No, they used to live in Paris, but they stay for one month or three months in Barbizon, mm -hmm. who was, which was a, a little village, you know, uh, nearby the forest at the edge completely. Oh, I see. At, at, when you cross the village, at the end you have the forest. Was there a school? 
or was it just no everybody? it's just we say school because you know it's a group of artists but in fact each of them was has his own individuality and his own knowledge and his own one, point of view one of the things that i found so fascinating is that the paris dealers would come to barbizon and buy 300 paintings a day something like that it's true, not only in Barbizon, they used to, it was Durand Ruel and another oh. art dealer that worked together for about 10 years, yes. His name was Hector Bram, who was another good art dealer. And they used to buy about, you know, because <laughs> when I was in the Dur Durand Ruel galleries, I have all the files and uh, I love to look at them. And I found out that they used to buy uh, 300, sorry, 300 paintings a day for Yes. That means there were so many people. But it was collection. It was the young painters, but also collection. So in those collections, you could find uh, young painters and old masters also. I see. So well, you would mm -hmm. go through the paintings and then pick mm -hmm. out who you thought mm -hmm. who who would rise to the mm -hmm. top. And what were those names? Corot, Lermite, Lermite, Daubigny, Millet, of course, uh, Arpigny. And then you have you have Trubert, who's quite important. We can find also uh, Chaigneau. So there were many people. So that the painting that you may see at the gallery are from that period. Mm -hmm. from the that other period. thing, um, when you go into impressionism, is there a close draw? Because the impressionists wanted to paint natural things too. Yes, but they, 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 they learned through uh, Coro and Daubigny. I see. So, so it was, it starts to go to the, to, to the nature. They decide to paint a landscape at its end, like an end, oh, instead of being just, uh, you know, a decoration uh, uh, in the painting. There are many, fantasy. many, many shows and of Impressionists, mm -hmm. of course, and then the, the Boston Museum of Fi Fine Art right now, mm -hmm. uh, Museum of Fine Art in Boston, has a show that's Corot to Monet, so mm -hmm. it blurs the line, I guess. Because, you know, Daubigny has been the, the bridge between the two schools. Oh, I see. It's Daubigny who introduced Monet in uh, 1817 London to Paul de Rorwell. Oh, so that, that's, that is yeah. the bridge. Oh, that's a great, that should be a great show. I haven't mm -hmm. seen it yet, but I'm going to see it. Yeah. And there's so many different ideas about how to approach the Impressionists. Because I, I saw another show in, uh, at the Art Gallery of Ontario where they had an Impressionist show, mm -hmm. but they did furniture with it and different things from the period. Well, it's p possible now you can see that in, uh, in Paris, in the Musée d'Orsay. Yeah. In the Musée d'Orsay, they decide to uh, cut the time, I would say. It's the 19th century till the beginning of the uh, 20th century. And you have painting, sculpture, uh, and all the design, furniture. All from that. I think it's interesting because you know, all the, is in, in, in the air, so... It shows a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It shows exactly. what they were doing, exactly. and I think that's what's so interesting. Mm -hmm. And I, our time is over, but you've been so enlightening to us. I thank mm. you so much for being with thanks us, to you. Thanks Mr. For you. Philippe Cezanne. Thank you. You're going back to Europe, I know, but thanks for coming by the studio today. And don't go away, because we'll be right back with painter Fulvia Levy Bianchi. Welcome back. I'm Joan Quinn, and I'm here with artist Fulvia Levy Bianchi, who was born and raised in Trieste. Yes. Fulvia attended the Academia de Brera and now lives in a converted factory loft in the center of Milan. <laughs> Did you start painting as soon as you got out of school? Yes. Slowly, because I don't understand well, and yeah. I don't speak in did you uh, paint when you finished the academia? Did you go paint right away? Yes. Where'd you go? Did you have a studio? 
many studios. <laughs> I changed the different uh, type of studio. Uh, different, different period, different studio. What were you painting then when you got out of school? After school, mm -hmm. in Milan, in, uh, see, generally in Milan. What, uh, mm. what subject? Mm. I enter in the uh, surrealistic subject ah. immediately, mm -hmm. immediately. And I worked uh, on the surrealism. But we have very many important father, and it was very difficult to go out. Who was the important father of surrealism? Surrealist. Dolly. Uh, yes. Marguerite. Yes, we have m many, many more. I was in love of them. I see. Yes. I and see. Uh, after. Uh, <clears throat> and after was how uh, do you Was subject matter was people, I think. Then you started uh, painting portraits. Yes, portrait and uh, and uh, other th other things. Every time, every. I don't speak. Yes, you do very well. One no. one thing you did, you did a lot of portraits. And mm. those portraits were shown in galleries and museums all yes. over Europe and yes. all over the world yes. because you had a particular style of painting portraits. See, yes, it's true. And tell me what the style was because you were just telling me the other day. Yes, I like uh, generally to enter <clears throat> to enter in the personality of the subject. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Otherwise, is, uh, uh, the portrait is nothing, it's a photo. How long does it take you to mm. m get that relationship? Many years, huh? many years, because I changed, uh, I changed, uh, I, I copies, I, uh, I put in my personality, but years, years and years. And part of the personality, I think, you don't just paint on canvas. You use other yes, materials. I, I see, normally on canvas, normally, mm -hmm. because I, I studied uh, oil on canvas, oil on canvas. And after, after I studied uh, for every personality, for oh. every different personalities, different uh, technique, different style. Because you used aluminum? Yes, now. Metal? Yes, and also. And what else? Collage? See, si, collage. Mm. You mix? I think uh, now we live in a moment uh, very interesting. There is a very big change in the world. The, the, and also in the art. I think that's great because I'm going to get to the changing mm. of, the, of the world because you stopped painting portraits and started studying the egg. And you've taken the egg from what the <laughs> 80s yes. all the way till now, yes. and the end of the egg. I want. We'll talk about what you think yeah. the egg is yeah. now. But mm. you have studied the egg. Why did the egg come to you? Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the egg, uh, the egg is the symbology of the surrealism. Ah, so you went back to your surrealism I thinking. Could. Yes. Yes, and uh, wash, 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 and uh, mm, remain the symbol. Uh, the symbol is very difficult because the symbol must to explain all. Uh, yeah, it uh, does. All. And it explains life. Yes. So this painting on the set, mm -hmm. which if you're sitting right where I am, it doesn't look like an egg, but when you get it, from yes. far away, mm. you see a perfect egg, yes. and it's oil. Oil. It's oil paint. See si, oil on <laughs> canvas. Canvas. In this case, canvas. So you have a certain process mm. that you do. What do you do? How do you paint this? Uh, for the beginning, hmm, very big work. <laughs> yeah. 
Tell yeah. us what you do. Yes, because uh, to have this effect, uh, I can paint every every day, every day when pictures on the pictures the day before. Oh, for every day. How long does it take you a painting? Well, like I this? don't know because this is small. Um, this is small. This is small. A month? Two eh? months? No, uh, no, because it's impossible. I studied to 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 go more quickly because many, <laughs> yes, because uh, many, many, I have many people interested in uh, to buy this. I see. So you have uh, to do, but possible to. But, but mm. tell me, one interesting thing is you start the painting, you can't finish it, so mm. you have a certain chamber room that you put it in. Yes. Tell us because about that. they must to stay very quiet, quiet. <laughs> and no powder, no light. And Is that right? Yes, and they stay uh, for one week or two weeks uh, uh, to uh, to stay. They're wet. Mm. The process the, is you yes. want to keep the paint mm. wet. Wet. Always, I can. I it's impossible for me to go to enter uh, on the on the picture if it's dry. So you have to continue. That's why you put yes. it in this chamber. It's exactly it's damp in there. Exactly, and it keeps your paint. Yes, wet? when I finish the uh, the day, I could the the working day, uh -huh. the picture go in a stage uh, particular with. Uh, Stay wet. Stays wet. Stays wet. damp. See. Is this? Does mm. this have uh, shellac on it? Vernais? Vernais. See, one well, type of See? varnish. How do you do that then? As soon as it's very dry, or when it's wet? When? No, no. The varnish when it's very, very dry. Ah. Mm. And then. It's a, a long process. Yeah, it seems like mm. it. And then, um, you also use different. Styles of you don't yeah. always use oil. You use other no, things. No, no, many things. No, many things because the, at at the moment, for example, I had a a, a show with the Ferrari Formula Uno, and the X is uh, um, dynamism. The egg is dynamic. Dynamic. And it also is so the Ferrari has the dyna exactly. dynamic feeling. Exactly. Allora, this show uh, I had in, in, in Italy uh, some months ago. Uh, there were cars, Formula Uno, and uh, the eggs behind uh. together because. Uh, is the quickly, is the. Uh, uh, Aerodynamic, dynamic, dynamic. The the one thing besides the eggs that you painted in different ways that you mm. used part of the steering wheel and part of the tires See. and you yes. juxtaposed against the mm. egg and the circle. Yes. You did sculpture. It looked like wings <laughs> of like the Ferrari was flying by yes, with yes, red yes. shiny. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And how that was yes. very large. Yes, I decided to. Uh, interpret the the quickly. Oh, the film, did you? Yes, uh, without car, naturally, but only impression. And the, the sculpture is uh, red, like a car, <laughs> and uh, has uh, the small uh, horsey. Oh yeah, the one. the emblem of Ferrari emblem of on Ferrari. the yellow background. Yes. yes. That was, it's like so fascinating mm. that a commercial company mm. would go for an art person. Yes. Because yes. I think it's great. You mm. have the art in their home, <laughs> in their, uh, what, their home See. factory. But there's no Big sculpture, mm. big mm. lots of, show me this red piece, hand me this. I'm gonna, because this depicts much of um, what you were talking about how you change the symbol of the egg. Mm. Tell us how you change this one. This one, this one. No, this one. Uh, this one has laser. Laser is a, a event on the life. Ah. Mm. 
So you... The egg represents the life, and the laser is an event inside. Then when we came to the final of the, mm. of the egg, you're painting the egg a different way now, with lots of background, part of uh, the background. And you told me that it was a dirty egg. Ah, <laughs> yes, the last. Uh, the last, the last uh, that been two or three that I've done. Yes, because uh, my interpretation is the life, is the world, is you, me. <laughs> and we live in a moment, very, very dirty one moment. That's very, very interesting. And you're just putting it into your, the yes, background of your eggs. Exactly. This is the first time. This is the born. Oh, when you're born, yeah. <laughs> uh, one other thing before we finish, I thought it was fascinating that you did several portraits of mm. David Copperfield, mm -hmm. who's a magician, yeah. and he has a museum in yeah. Las Vegas. Yes, it's true. And you have, he has your work in the museum. In the museum. And now, uh, now there are stamps also. They made stamps that say Fulvia Levy Bianchi, Bianchi, and they used the Four, portraits. See. For David Copperfield. Mm. That was pretty far out as mm. well, I thought. And you do some sculpture, right? Yes, also. I've done a boost on the face this, in bronze. Mm. What do you like to work with best? The best. What is your favorite uh, the, uh, work? I don't know. Mm, maybe I'm more, I'm more in the... Uh, Interesting on the painter, painter. because uh, I I because uh, I'm looking for different styles, different technical. And so you're always uh, the sculpture is more um, it's direct. See, if you if you make a, f a face, it's uh, that is yes. You can't change it. Mm. Not no. too much, no. Not too much. Not too mm -hmm. much. But you're always inventing new ways to to capture people <laughs> and portraits. Yes. And also to paint. Yes, yes. Fulvia, mm -hmm. I wish I could speak Italian <laughs> so that you could uh, answer me I'm in very, Italian. very sorry, but... I'm so happy you came from <laughs> Milan, where you live all the time, and people can come and see you in no, Milan. I know. I am sorry. I don't speak in English. It's incredible. And Barbara, but, Barbara Dvorzan. Has Barbara your Dvorzan work. is my agent here, yeah. my gallerist, and she's speaking French with me. And uh, that's it. I forget <laughs> my small English. Thank you. And the next time shall be better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Too. Thanks for watching the Joan Quinn profile and keep riding to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor. And we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles. Mm -hmm.